Are you looking to serve a restaurant quality meal at home and impress that special someone? Find out today on WTF all the recipes that you'll need to make an unforgettable meal. Hello and welcome to WTF where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, the owner of Modernist Pantry. Today Scott and I are doing an episode that's all about Valentine's Day. So if you want to make a restaurant quality meal that's super memorable for that special somebody in your life, Scott's got the recipes to make sure that this will be the best Valentine's Day ever, guaranteed. <laughs> guaranteed. No pressure, oh, Scott. Boy. No pressure. All right. So what, what are we making today here? Well, what Janie doesn't know is that she's actually going to be participating in a demo today. Yay. And that demo is for a homemade tortellini. Sweet. <clears throat> but what we did is we take AP flour, and we're going to give it the qualities of a double O caputo flour. Uh, that is a flour that is commonly used for pastas and bread, but it may be a little bit difficult to find for the home cook. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people think it's a really high gluten dough, but it is not. It is actually a mildly glutinous dough, not as glutinous as something like bread flour. Okay. So you can use AP flour, but we add about 2% of vital wheat gluten, which we actually have right over here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you add that right into your flour, along with durum flour, and the binder is water and olive oil. And you can find the uh, recipe right on the blog. So it contains no eggs, doesn't have anything like that. Okay. So if for some reason that you are sensitive to eggs or you don't eat them, you can absolutely use this recipe. Uh, and what we did is we use the vital wheat gluten to give it a little bit more stretchiness, but we don't want the water absorption of a bread flour, so we use AP flour, and it makes a really beautiful pasta dough. So right here I have a couple of rounds of pasta dough that I already cut out. They're at the, the proper thickness that I like. Nice. Right? And then we have a uh, roasted beet and mascarpone filling, which you can find the recipe on the blog. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really kind of intricate way to make the beet, but it makes a beet better than you've ever really had. And then you puree it up with the mascarpone. So I'm going to put a little bit in the center here. And I'll do one and then I'll make Janie do one All as right, well. All right, so you can see yes. how, how you do it at home. <laughs> it's great. And, and sometimes you find them. And the big thing about uh, tortellini is that you want that kind of bowl shape, but you also want a, a little hole in the center. And that can be difficult. Some people use their pinky. I have giant hands, so it makes a really awkward looking uh, tortellini. So I devised a way is you take either a chopstick right here. I have a deco spoon, so it gives me different gauges. Mm -hmm. And I just put it into some salt. We all have salt in our kitchen, and it makes it nice and sturdy. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do... Janie, watch very, very closely because you're going to be doing it next. Okay. So I'm just going to brush gently around 50% of the dough, so around the bottom half. I'm going to fold it right over. I make okay. a little pinch right at the top, and then I work my way around, kind of holding in that filling. Okay. If you don't, it'll jet out the sides. Mm -hmm. And then you have beet all over your hands, you have beet all over the table. So mm -hmm. you go very slowly, and if you see it starting to fill, you just kind of crimp it off. It is a little bit like making a Chinese dumpling. There you go. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the next part is I take these two ends and I hold them and I just make them meet on the other side of my deco spoon. I just give it a quick pinch. Right. Now that just looks like a nor normal tortellini. Mm -hmm. But if you let it sit for a day, you get this Ooh. beautiful purple, you know, half purple, half yellow color. And then when, yeah. you, when you cook it, it turns into a nice burgundy, which we'll see in our final dish. That looks very So special. Janie, go ahead. Let's... Uh, Okay. Let's see, I'll move this over so you can do it. Oh, cool. Just, All right. Yep, so the floor is yours. Awesome. No pressure. Just a little bit, yep. It's perfect. Fold it over into a semicircle. Right right there, yeah, because that's where it first wants to come out. Right. Yep. And you can feel the filling. There Ooh. you go. Uh, oh, I got a little bit of it out, but it's okay. It's okay. Because <laughs> we're at home. We're not in a restaurant setting, so you can do things like that. All right, wait, so yes, it's, right. it's the flat side that goes against it. And there you go. And then just pinch, and it should slide right off. There ah! you go. Oops. Take it easy. Awesome. Yay, that was super there fun. There you go. And you have tortellini. So these are great. You can just lay down a little bit of semolina flour, let them sit for a day. They peel right off, and then when you cook them, we have a nice, beautiful... Um, I love that Finalized color. dish. It's, it's really like a purpley red and not... Yes. So it's like romantic, but not in your face about it. Exactly. So, so <laughs> let's make uh, 
a final dish. Okay. Right. So I have those tortellinis. All these recipes will all, will be on the blog. I have a, a piece of white fish here, and I actually. Um, basted it in some tarragon and some lavender, so you do get a little bit of floralness from it, right? We're on Valentine's Day, so why not? Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I have a white sheet of paper, and this is a nice little plating technique, is I'm just going to brush the edge of this white sheet of paper with some water, which I just used with my tortellini, right? There it is. I'm going to lay it down over half this, this plate, and then I have beet ash. So when I peeled the beets, I saved all those peels. They were obviously washed before. Mm -hmm. I dehydrated them and then I cooked them in an oven around 350 until they turned almost black. Not burnt. You don't want any white on there. Mm -hmm. You just want it to turn almost black. So I have this really dark color and I can sprinkle it on. The reason why I wet half of my sheet of paper is that when I lift it up, None of it falls back on the plate. Oh, look how nice Voila. that looks. It's like I've done Kitchen this before. Magic. Right? <laughs> and now you know the trick. There you go. There we go. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a little bit of that puree because it really has such a beautiful color. I'm just put a little line there. I don't want too much. I just need a little bit of color on the plate. And I just give a little push. It doesn't have to be perfect. Whatever you push, you stop there and you allow it to sit. So don't like push and then re-sweat. Yeah, really you don't to... wipe it off. It's That's fine. How I try to do nobody it. knows. Nobody knows what it's supposed to look like, right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to lay down my tortellini. These were just cooked. I'm just going to lay them down. I really want to show off that color. So, and as you can see, I never really put anything in a, in a perfect line. I like organic kind of plates that look and feel a little bit different, not so formatted. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Let me move this over here. Right here, we have some beets that I just julienned and I fried at 285 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And you fry them until they stop bubbling. That means all the liquid is gone, but they do not burn. Mm. So they have this really beautiful kind of color. And I, like I said, where they fall, they live. Right? And I try and keep it all on this side. So if I have one right here, I can just pick it up. You can pick, purchase these little forceps or tweezers, as we call them, in a, mm -hmm. in a restaurant right at modernistpantry.com. Yes. The, uh, the little beet crisps are super delicious. I mean, if you love beets like Scott and I do, yes. mm, delicious. So my sauce right here is actually a really special one, and I use uh, egg yolk powder and 210S, which is an ingredient that we carry, which allows me to make something like a cold hollandaise. Well, some mm -hmm. people might say, well, isn't mayonnaise cold hollandaise? It's a cold emulsion, yes, but this uses actual butter, and I still get the texture of a really beautiful hollandaise. Mm -hmm. And a benefit of it, when you cool down that butter, is you kind of get a velvety uh, sheen to it. Mm -hmm. So when I put this over, like I said, this side of the plate is very almost chaotic, and, and uh, I don't have to worry about where my sauce is lying. I just can go back and forth, make sure a little bit gets on there. If I want to do a nice little dot over here, I can do that. Just mm -hmm. let it sit, pick it up. Whatever you do, it's totally fine. Just make sure you get enough sauce on there. And I always like to say, not too much sauce, not too little sauce. If your customers say, oh, I wish I just had one last bite, that's a good thing. That's true. Now with all these kind of darker colors, putting a little bit of that tarragon, like I said, I basted my uh, fish in tarragon, so there's a little mm. bit of tarragon flavor. I like to put some fresh tarragon on the dish, kind of as a visual indicator. And for each piece of tortellini, I'll put one sprig of tarragon. And that looks really beautiful. I think it does look like very, it looks composed, but kind yeah, of organic and wild at the same time. Controlled chaos, just yes, like a kitchen. Exactly. <clears throat> and finally, it's just a, a pan roasted piece of halibut here. And I lay it right down on top of my sauce. And boom, we have a beautiful dish that you can give to your significant other and they'll be completely wowed by it. Yeah, because as you can see, like this is really a technique that, you know, mm -hmm. or these techniques, like it's people that like me could potentially do if I spend the time to do it, but so can you. And it's going to be totally amazing because no one would expect this to come out of a home kitchen, yeah. but it absolutely can. And so just for the folks at home, you know, um, Scott, if the, where they live, they don't have halibut all the time, which we do here in Maine. What other whitefish might you recommend in its place? 
If you have haddock, that's fine. I would just suggest maybe doing a roulade with a haddock because trying to pan roast it can be very difficult. It doesn't really like to free itself up from the pan and it's so thin. Cod works, but if you're down south and all you have is catfish, you could absolutely do that. Uh, just make sure that if it's thin, roll it up, do something else with it. But you can definitely sear it, roast it, whatever you like. Poaching it really works too. And you can just lay it right down on the plate. Yeah, it looks absolutely delicious. And I just want to jump back to the sauce real quick because we kind of like went over it. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on here and we do have a lot of recipes on the website for it too. Yes, yeah, so you can make this entire thing <clears throat> off the website. Um, but just quickly, because you mentioned real quick egg yolk powder and 210S, yes. and we haven't done those on WTF yet. Yes. So what what's the benefit of using egg yolk powder? So this, you can leave at room temperature this sauce. Okay. So if I make it with uh, traditional egg yolks, I just run the risk of really, you know, causing foodborne illness. I, I don't like to do that. So the powdered egg yolks, and you can do that with anything. So if you make mayonnaise, you can use the powdered egg yolks, things like that. And I'm not wasting the egg white. Right. Because sometimes I don't have a use. I can freeze the egg whites, but I don't always have a use for egg whites, especially at home. Some people just throw them away, but you could just use something like an egg yolk powder. Yeah, definitely having a pasteurized option is nice. And 210, as I'm sure we're going to cover this one, but yes. just real quick, like what exactly is its function? So 210S is really nice is that it can be used as a, a thickener, but as an emulsifier, you can make things like butter syrups, and this is based off of a butter syrup. I just use uh, vinegar instead of, you know, simple syrup, mm -hmm. and then I can add things to it, but when I... So when I go to put it on a plate, I can, you know, it can be heated slightly, it can be cool, and it'll always stay that nice viscous uh, texture. Also, if you wanted to make a butter syrup for, let's say, a hot buttered rum mm -hmm. with 210S, you can dilute it and it won't break the emulsion. So you can get yeah. the butter in there with like a, without an oil slick on top. Yeah, and actually this product was brought to us originally by Dave Arnold over at Cooker, and Ish Cooking, Cooker Issues, <laughs> Cooking Issues and also Booker and Dax. Um, and people are using it for cocktails, so we carried it, but now we're finding like a lot of really great uses for mm -hmm. it in different culinary applications as well. So we're pretty excited about playing around more with 210S and, and getting a whole episode about that. Yes. Um, so now you have this beautiful, beautiful entree and you are ready to just, you know, impress the heck out of somebody. Um, but what if they also want something sweet? What, do we have any recommendations for? Yeah, so we've powder? done a few sweet things. I, I believe yeah. last week we actually did a nice uh, pistachio cream puff. And mm -hmm. before, uh, I'm trying to think, I think it's episode 122, that we can do a cremo that is twisted using NH pectin. So yeah. a lot of really fun things as well as pure coat to make the, you know, the glass or the mm -hmm. fruit leather. Oh yes, so I think the white chocolate cremo is my personal favorite, so if I were doing this, that's the way that I would go with it, and that's episode 122, which you can check out. Yep. Um, and then also full recipes for everything, including all the desserts, are up on the blog, so help yourselves. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, write in. We're happy to see what you come up with. Great. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garin. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want these great recipes and these awesome ingredients, first you're gonna to have to like, comment, and subscribe. And then you're gonna to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you can find those awesome recipes and you can ask a chef. And to get these great ingredients, go to modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen helping you transform food. <laughs>